Hey guys, welcome to the video on microeconomics. Uh, particularly, we'll be talking about um, the ideas uh, surrounding the circular flow model of economics, and it's a pretty, pretty basic um, idea in economics, and it's also pretty fundamental. So that's why it's important. Um, now you'll see here I have this this um, circular flow diagram, and it looks pretty kind of vapid right now. It's because we're going to fill it in with what, what we um, are going to talk about right now. So basically the circular flow model looks like this. We have households here. Oops, sorry, wrong tool. We have uh, households here and uh, the businesses or the firms, factories with the smokestacks over here. And basically you see incomes and expenditures. And the, the, the significance of that is that you'll see that uh, arrow pointing towards the house, households from the businesses, um, the incomes, right? That makes sense because the, the members of the families um, in each house, they'll work at the business and they'll receive an income from the business. And then expenditures make sense because in the household, you know, you'll buy, let's say, I don't know, you buy a TV from the factory that produces these TVs. You're spending money on the TV, so there's, that money goes to the business. The expenditures goes to the business. Now we're going to talk about what exactly these um, encapsulate and what they entail. So there are two markets that you want to look at when, you, when you're looking at um, pretty much all of microeconomics and especially the circular flow model. And the, um, those two are the product market and the factor market. So product. I'm just going to do MKT. Now the, these two markets are very important to understand. Product market is what you're going to see when you see our um, standard supply and demand curves that you draw for a certain good. That's generally in the product market. And then the factor market is when you get into um, what we've talked about earlier, like like the uh, marginal revenue product of labor and, and the um, marginal resource cost of labor and all, all that sort of stuff. That's the, the, the market for resources and inputs. But the product market entails um, two different things. It encompasses two different things. One is that houses give businesses SIGX. One of the key foundations is SIGX, okay? And then, oops, sorry about that. And then um, the second important thing to know about the product market is that businesses give houses goods and services, G and S, okay? That's the product market. Now we're going to look at the factor market. That's what I was talking about before with the marginal revenue product of labor and whatnot. That's all the factor market, like where, like the market in which businesses over here hire their, fa hire their labor or get their um, the various things, their capital goods that they need to produce, all the inputs. So what you'll see in here will make a lot of sense to you then. The um, houses give businesses land labor, and capital. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but that's not directly from house to business. That has to go through the bank and whatnot, but um, we'll talk about that later. And then businesses give houses WIRP, kind of like our SIGX up there. It's almost the inverse of SIGX. Wages, interest rates, rent, and profit. So that's... Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, interest, mostly interest, not interest rates. Think of it as interest. And um, so that's the factor market, and this is the product market. So we'll see. Okay, so this is from H to B, houses to businesses, right? Houses to businesses. This is from B to H, businesses to houses. Um, land, labor, capital, that's from houses, houses to businesses, sorry. And then uh, WIRP, W-I-R-P, is from business to house. So let's go ahead and add this to the diagram. We have from business to house, we have goods and services, G and S. And we have business to house, we have W-I-R-P. Now below here we have house expenditures, right? Sig X. Remember Sig X. It's important to remember what Sig X is. Consumption, investment spending, government spending, and net exports. And then um, land, labor, capital. Okay, 
So that's basically the circular flow model in a nutshell. That's how the businesses and the houses interact in these markets and um, what, how these resources are allocated and whatnot. So SIGX we know. SIGX is consumption spending, investment spending, government spending, and uh, net, net imports exports. So um, exports minus the imports. And so consumption spending is pretty basic. That's what probably is going to be most common when talking about expenditures because when houses are spending, it's normally going to be consumption spending. That means um, if you were to buy a carton of milk and you were to drink that milk, that's consumption spending. You're buying it so you can consume it. Um, investment spending is uh, when you invest, when you invest, when you uh, purchase something that's an investment. It's um, because it'll help you um, create something for your business later. So um, an investment, or not not necessarily for your business, but it's essentially an input. When you spend, when you spend on an when you invest in something, it's not like the typical, you'll hear like investors, um, you know, will invest in a company. It's not so much that, but what we're talking about is when you buy something that helps you as an input to, to create something else or helps you to do something else, that's generally thought of as an inve as investment spending. And that kind of sounds hard to explain, but that's the best I can do um, in, you know, terms like that. Uh, government spending is pretty simple. It's just the amount of money that the uh, government is spending on what public works projects and other things like that. And that exports imports, that makes a lot of uh, sense as well. Um, as the United States right now, we are, our X is very far negative because we import a lot more than we export. We have a lot of goods coming in from other countries that are massive exporters, right? So we import a lot of things. I know you might think we export a lot as well, but we import way more than we export. We're massively negative on the X scale. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that's how it is. Other countries are much greater in their exports. But okay, I digress. So land labor capital. That households indirectly give businesses that that um, LLC there um, because houses. People will go to their bank. People that live in these houses, they'll go to their bank, and they'll they'll to store their money in the bank and that that money is lent to businesses it's lent out to businesses to buy land labor or capital they need to they need to pay rent on their land with that money that they borrow from the bank they need to hire workers at the appropriate wage rate and capital capital goods input goods they need to buy this factory here with money and where do they get that money they get it from the bank so indirectly they've gotten it from the household now let's talk over here, let's talk about um, what businesses give houses. Goods and services, that's pretty simple. Let's say this is, um, let's say this is a factory that produces TVs. It's, um, it's going to pump out a lot of TVs, it's going to sell it to this house, almost directly, not exactly directly if this is a factory, um, and that's a good. As services, the same thing. It might not be a factory, but services work the same way. Now wages, interest, rent, and profit. So basically, that's pretty simple. Wages. Someone's working. That that whoever goes to work from this house, they work at this business. They're getting paid a wage, so they're, that's how they're bringing in the income for their family and to pay for the house. So that's their wage, right? That's that pretty much. That's called. Those are called the um, returns. Economically, that those are called returns. W I R P. Returns from your work at the business. Um, so that's about it. There's not much more to think about, especially for the AP exam. There's not it, you can't go, go much more in depth um, than that. I think good things to focus on for multiple choice would be the markets, and you'll never see a free response with this. I I really doubt it. Of course, I'm not a teacher, but I don't think you'd see a free response with the circular flow model because there just really isn't much you can do with it. It's just an important thing to understand if you want to progress in economics. So. Um, It'll be great to watch this video before you move on to more advanced stuff. Um, just, or you can always regress if you forget something. But this is not always going to show up on the AP exam, but it's good to know.